Welcome to my bathroom. Ta! It's not too, it's actually a fairly good sized bathroom. This is a great sized bathroom. Yeah. And last week I showed you the dead plant that was sitting right here. <laughs> and I talked about how I was like, it just, when I got home, if it could speak, it would have said to me like, time to go, time is up. There was some good conversation around the plant about what is minimalism and what isn't. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. Always glad on Sunday mornings to be joined by my twin sister, Diana. And uh, last week we showed the plant, the poor plant in my bathroom. <laughs> it got forgotten about over vacation. Nobody watered it. And so it didn't make it. But what I had realized was that I actually wasn't sad. I felt a little bit of relief when I realized that it was no longer living and I was just like okay with being like, it served its season, it's out of here. Well, should we celebrate the fact that that plant made it like two years? Yeah. It was great. Yeah, so, I was even surprised maybe that you bought it in the first place. It was an impulse buy, all the, the, all the checkout. Yeah, you weren't yeah. actually committing to a plant lifestyle, you were just kind of thought it was cute. <laughs> exactly, and, yeah. yeah. That's okay. Yep. Yeah. So we forgot to, well, we forgot to leave instructions for it to get watered, but I wanted to clarify because I know some people were like, it looked cute on there, like, and it was nice, and now it's kind of bare. And I just wanted to clarify that minimalism doesn't mean all of your counters need to be clear or that you can't have a plant on it. For me, minimalism means I am not going to keep anything that causes me stress and that is sending me messages of extra work and things that I have to do if it's not something that I want to be doing right now. If I'm right. wanting to grow plants and do that around our house, then that's one thing, but it's just not the season that we're in right now. So yes, I agree. It was cute and I liked it there, but I'm not going to go out and buy another plant just to replace it because actually I don't, I'm totally fine for the season we're in right now, not having anything on there. I'd actually like to talk about the candle I gave you that's no longer <laughs> out there. The plant's fine. All these is not going to feel sad that you gave it away, yep. threw it away. Uh, but the candle, what was wrong with the candle, Don? Well, I just realized, so our kids are 6 through 11, and I'm really trying to help them learn housekeeping skills. And so anything that just is in the way of that right now doesn't have value to me and so that candle diana gave it to me two years ago on her birthday that's also lasted a long time a long it smells I, great i light it when we have guests over because then when they come in the door right there yeah then you can it smells nice it's, yeah nice ambiance um but it was always something that we'd have to lift up clean around i mean does your bathroom just where doesn't toothpaste splatter go yeah you know then you have to wash it off and scrub it off and all that and yeah. so i was like I, I don't know that it's worth it. So I did the Marie Kondo thing. She says for every like item in your house, group them all together. So I do have a shelf in our pantry cabinet where all of our candles are. Sure. So I just put it up there with those so it can't get spit on. And then when we have company, which isn't all that frequent right now, I can just pull it out and light it. Like it's not that big of a deal actually. Oh, okay. So you still have it. I still <laughs> have it. But I don't have to have it. Right? If I had decided that I didn't want that candle anymore, I'd used it for two years and I was over it, I could have passed it on and my sister would need to understand that. I feel like we're covering so many. Who knew a plant and a candle, right? Well, I think all of us have to kind of get this off our, show, off oh, our chest. Oh, right. Because, that, and I think it was a great clarification. Wait a minute. If I want to choose a minimal or more simple lifestyle, does that mean I can't have plants or I can't have candles, right? right. So I appreciate you just kind of taking time to unpack that for all of us right now. For those of us who grew up and there was always a plant there or there was always a decoration there or you know it does feel a little bit weird but I would encourage you like even just take one room in your house and just clear everything off like maybe it's your kitchen counters maybe it's a bathroom clear everything off at first it's gonna be like oh that's so bare I don't want my house to be cold live with it for like a week and I I would challenge you I would bet after a week you'd be like there's something kind of nice about that. Well, I'll give you this, because pretty much whenever I come, I come into this bathroom first. <laughs> and so, to be very honest, I did not necessarily notice that the ah. plants or the candle were gone. You know, mm -hmm. it does feel super clean in here, and I can see how it would be a lot easier to tidy up, and I, I, I would be washing my hands right now, and I would not have even thought about it. Yeah, so, interesting. I just mm -hmm. know, so. A lot of times we put more thought into it, right? Yeah, than other people. Although someone did come into my house the other day and say, oh, are you packing to move? Did you say, yes, 
We've That's arrived. what I'm going for. That's a minimalist <laughs> you right don't there. You come in and say like, oh, have you been robbed? But like no. moving, that's a good idea. Actually though, <laughs> until I, I took him to my master bathroom, I didn't really, but if you go into my master bathroom right now, we are having a little bit of a problem area, mm -hmm. which relates to this conversation yeah. because all of a sudden our countertops, it's like our vanity, there's just not enough room in there. Yep. And I'm like, I don't know what just happened. We did get a new uh, toothbrush yep an electric one that kind of has to stay like a um, water pick one so it has the reservoir water tank yeah, yeah which by the way amazing so that kind of changed our dynamic a little bit mm -hmm. um and uh, i did get a few more like face things <laughs> man the older really? you get it's just like i'm so surprised you can't even <laughs> i know you I'm just <laughs> gotta do it and so yeah anyway i have been trying to kind of figure out and my curling irons are all of a sudden in my sink all the time you know how you just like unplug them and i don't know i put them yeah. in the sink it's safe from so the cats. yeah yeah and so it's just kind of become a little bit of a dumping ground yeah and i did see there was a good question about like well what do i do with my water pick or my light up vanity mirror yeah and again i'm not opposed to things like if it's more of a pain to put it away than it is to leave out then let's leave it out, right? Yeah. But then maybe you do want to remove the candle and the plant and the other things that you don't need or use less occasionally. Right. I did see someone on Pinterest put their water pick. I was looking then yeah. I'm like in like a cute um, metal container and then okay. the plug could come out. So at least it was a little bit camouflage. I don't know if that's did they actually have to practical. take it out every day? No, I think you can just grab the toothbrush. Oh, so okay. Or I was thinking, yeah, something you can just put over the top of it. Maybe yeah. I can cut the bottom out. Or having a shelf, to, again, depending on how your space, yep. but even just having a shelf where it's up off the vanity, but it's like on the wall. It's amazing yeah. how even that gives you back your like visual simplicity. Yep. So. You gotta get a little creative, but well, and I just need to simplify again. I know that's what yeah. I realized as I was showing you, and I'm like, okay, look at this, look at my space, Don. Like, what's going on yeah. here? And even I was like, and she's like, well, why are the curling irons in the sink? And I'm like, well, they used to fit in the cabinet, and now they don't. Did you see my bin for my curling irons? I just love it. I did see it. I actually and like so. That a lot. That's what I recognized. I was like, oh, it's just time to do a little spring cleaning. It's just that's a creep, the problem. right? It creeps yeah. in, you try new face products, you don't want to get rid of the ones that didn't work perfectly because they were expensive. Yeah. I think that's actually the main thing is just that cabinet where I used to put that stuff. It needs to, I need to grab a waste paper basket. Is that what we call it? A waste paper basket? Are you in elementary school again? <laughs> I don't even know what it is. A garbage I can? I need to grab a garbage can <laughs> and, and uh, so yeah, and just kind of give it a little spring yeah. cleaning, probably. You know, I realized too when I was organizing the bathroom again for that video we did recently, and I'm like, I only have like the bandwidth to keep the stuff I'm currently using in the yeah. bathroom. If I try to keep it for another day, or oh, when this moisturizer runs out, I never get to it, mm -hmm. and it just clutters up. And so I'm like, I just got to keep the stuff only I'm using today. I even got rid of like a few more things when I was doing that. Mm -hmm. So. Keep what you're using today. We don't have bandwidth um, to inventory and to keep track of that inventory for other stuff. Yeah. Well, and I know we don't want to be wasteful, right? We're right. like, oh, we're just going to throw all this stuff away now. Mm -hmm. But what I'm realizing is, well, I could either either part with it now, donate it, and pass it on now, or I could wait six months or a year and have my cabinets be full again and all that. Like somehow that makes it okay to get rid of it. So I'm like, let's just fast forward skip past yep. that like waiting period and just recognize you're not using it yep i just got an eyebrow pencil the other day way too dark um, and i was like can i return it now i have to go through that whole process i bought it online oh, now yeah it's just a whole process yep. you know but mm -hmm. i have to decide right now like okay either i'm gonna feel really guilty about it or i'm gonna take the 15 minutes and figure out how to return it and get my money back mm -hmm. but it's just a process and oh, so yeah. i you know and that's where you get so much better at it Mm -hmm. I just don't buy those things anymore. I know. They got me. Were you tired? I was tired. <laughs> this, this is a fact. Yeah. Who hasn't bought impulse things when you're tired? Oh. Scrolling on Facebook, Instagram. Instagram. Instagram influencers. It's terrible. Yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. it totally was, it was an Instagram yep. thing. Um, and so this quote had popped up and I thought it was so perfect. It's Stephen Furtick. He said, when you get too tired, you start fighting battles that don't matter to distract you from the ones that do. Hmm. This is why you need rest. Yeah. I can't imagine, or I don't know why I have young kids right now. So I'm in like mama phase and sometimes that means lack of sleep phase. The biggest thing for me right now is people's names. I'll be like, Oh, hi, 
Dawn. <laughs> it's like always like a one second delay in my brain. Do you remember those days? You can't. I don't remember. There's yeah. a reason. You don't, right? You, just you, just, out. you don't have recall. I was that. younger then. It was easier, <laughs> man. I see Diana now and I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. We had our kids younger. Uh, it really takes a tribe when you're a village, yeah. when you're older. Yeah. And so um, we need rest because yeah. when we're tired, I've noticed that I'm so much more easily offendable oh, when yeah. I'm tired and I'll be like talking to someone else and they're telling me about what someone else did and now I'm upset at someone else even though I don't even know who they are <laughs> and you know or again I'm on Instagram or social media and I'm seeing things and I'm getting riled up about things that are going on in the world and you start going down paths in your mind or giving emotional energy to things that aren't even helpful yeah and then when you're not rested you're not able to focus on the things that actually are important or right. significant in your life and you're not able to give enough attention to what it is that the Lord is calling you to or that you are most passionate about yeah and we've you know I've been reading the book essentialism lately and we'll talk about it more coming up on Tuesday but it, it really talks about how everything almost everything around us is noise is makes absolutely no difference in our life if we actually boiled it down to the things that matter it's a very small amount of things and I, I was thinking about that because I'm like right if we're tired if we're overwhelmed with stuff it is so hard to discern how yeah. do I know what I can cut out how do I know what I can throw away in my bathroom what do you mean you know yeah. and we have to be able to take a, a step back get rested and separate ourselves from some of this and I've noticed too when I'm tired I just have so much less self-discipline mm -hmm. which then usually translates to drive yeah. So if it's like, wow, I've had this dream forever, but I just don't have the focus. I don't have the energy for it. Yeah. Almost, I feel like everything in our lives often can come back to rest mm -hmm. and bandwidth. But for a lot of us, it's so counterintuitive that like, okay, no, I want to get over there, but first I have to just stay here and like rest a little bit and, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of give myself what I need in order to be able to have the focus and the passion that I need for that. So this is Hebrews 4 verses 9 through 11. It says, So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. Mm -hmm. And in the original language, the term used for rest is actually referring to a few different things. It's, it's even referring to like eternal rest or the promised land. But the third way that it's used and that is kind of referenced here is God resting from his work on the seventh day of creation. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting in days one through six in the, the creation account, the, it says the day started and the day ended. But on the seventh day when it says God rested from his labor, there's no reference to a start or an end. And so it's suggesting that there's now an eternal rest mm -hmm. that everyone can enter into. And that's what the writer is is referring here to and so what I love about this is for those of us who are Christians there is it's not a day of the week hmm. there's actually just an eternal rest in the Lord and in our place with him as sons and daughters that we can enter into I mean just imagine like if you had like the best parents in the world and you come home from college on the weekend right and you put down your bags and your mom's like oh the pancakes are on and your dad's like hey why don't we go fishing after lunch you know <laughs> Or whatever I don't know but can you just imagine how you would just be like oh I'm home yeah they don't need anything from me I don't have to put anything on they're gonna provide for me I'm mm -hmm. gonna be safe here that rest is always available to us in the Lord and so you know yes like we need physical rest please like make sleep a priority make vacation a priority weekends take time off but also understand that even in a busy season even like I can't always sleep through the night right now there is a great that we can enter into in the Lord that our souls can find rest and that there's an eternal peace that's just waiting for us there that we can enter into I know so how do we do this right <laughs> <laughs> you need space I tell you what sometimes for me when I'm really busy I just love listening to talk radio it kind of is like my entertainment and it stimulates my mind but I don't have to care that much about it and whatever and I find myself doing that as a coping mechanism when I'm really busy yeah and I just want to zone out you yeah. know and for some of us it's Netflix or 
you know, social media or whatever. And so I've been challenging myself to get back on board with my Bible reading plan. And I know, you know, there's a great podcast we've been recommending mm -hmm. and there's a reading plan that goes along with it. Somehow, you know, find that strength and that discipline to get on track with that. Um, or again, putting on worship music, listening to the Christian radio in the car then, that's kind of been one of my big things now too. Um, whatever you can do to kind of plug back into that source yeah. and enter into that rest, because the world isn't gonna offer it to us. So Lord, we thank you. Lord, thank you for this truth. Lord, this eternal truth that you've given to us, that at any time, any time during the day, at any point in our lives, we can turn to you. We can let our guard down. We can rest in your peace, Lord, and we can receive freely of your provision and know that you are a good God that you are taking care of us as your children, Lord, and that you are leading us, Lord, that you are the one that leads us in eternal purpose. You've gifted us, you've wired us, you've anointed us, Lord, each one for different things. Lord, each one of us has a role in the body and a place in this world that only we can fill. So Father, I ask that you would give us focus, that you would give us vision, you would give us strength to pursue the things that we feel most called to, and Lord, that you would help the other things to fade away. And ultimately, that you would help us to operate from a place of rest and trust in you. So I bless each one of us now in Jesus' name. Amen.